All right, guys, we've got a Samsung unit here. This is a microwave. Just for reference, 52, so 63 degrees, whatever. I'm gonna start in the microwave. Uh, let's do a minute. Now pay attention to the noise or the sound that it's making. It's got a deep, heavy hum, and usually, not always, but we're gonna check the magnetron. That's part of the heating circuit. So start. <laughs> So 65, same thing, nothing has changed. So water should be nice and hot. All right, so we're gonna open this thing up and we're gonna do some testing. First thing, unplug the microwave and we do have screws that we do have to remove. Pretty straightforward, but you have these up top, all these have to come out. And you do have some on the side. Gotta remove those. Also underneath. Some units do have screws underneath. The back. Okay, so once those are removed, that one as well, we're gonna take this cover off and we're going to do some testing let's do that all right so to keep your screws in order okay sometimes you put this thing back together and you have screws from different places don't do that okay so good practice take pictures of the screws where they're at or have a baggie put top screws in a bag these are pretty easy to remember. They have the flat head, but I like everything to be back exactly the way it was. So I like to make sure they're organized and I know where they go. So these are the top screws, pay attention to them and then organize them. And then you can take the top off when it's time to put it back, you know exactly where they go. All right, so keep them organized, separate your screws so you don't have different screws in different places. All right, so top is free. Pay attention to your cord. You might have to lift this piece and free your power lead. And you lift, and you basically pull. Pull this thing off. Sometimes I like to take this cover off first. Um, top's free, but it does kind of hold it back a little bit, so we pull to the side. Try not to damage anything. All right, then we just lift this off. First things first on this, obviously your fuse is good. You have lights, all those things you can bypass. Your door switches are gonna be good. Normally you don't have an issue with your door switches if you're not heating, normally. So our main concern is gonna be, and by the way, this is your capacitor, high voltage, be super careful. Do not handle it normally, it's discharged but you do want to make sure you actually um, short it out if you're going to be touching or moving it. Otherwise, don't touch it. It can be lethal, seriously. All right, so we're going to be checking the magnetron, which is down here. 
He's what I think is the issue. And we're going to turn it back on. And I'm going to show you also another way that we can just kind of verify that we're not getting any power going to the magnetron or we're getting power going to the magnetron, but the magnetron is not doing its job. So, all right, so let's plug it back in. All right, so right now we're using our non-contact. That means your fuse has power going through both sides. I didn't think that was our issue because we have power. Okay, so everything is live. Okay, we have power coming in. Now, this is the high voltage side. This is the heating area. So, nothing is present yet. That's your uh, transformer. Okay, nothing. Power is going in. This is the low voltage side. And then, this become high voltage. And then, high voltage. All these are high voltage. So, totally dead inactive. Now we're going to turn the unit on. One minute. Start. Again, active. Now, see that? So all those are getting power. Everybody's being energized. Non contact. Okay. So So that tells me that everything on this side is good. We're going to pull this out and we're going to check it. We're going to check the resistance and see what the reading is. All right, so we talk about discharging this, okay? Let's say you're not comfortable doing it, you don't want to. Now, you see that neutral and where he goes? So, to be honest, if you don't touch up there, and all you concentrate here, don't touch any wireless bare. If you can't wear rubber gloves, even better. They do protect. But if you're not totally confident, you can always get a pliers. Okay. Squeeze it. And just take it off. It's plastic. Everything's insulated here. Pretty safe. But just, just in case if you're not totally confident, you can do that. All right. So we have... Let's not spill any water in here. And by the way, when you're testing your microwave, when you have it out... You do want to put something under it so that sometimes the lights will come on and you can actually burn the whatever the padding or the counter. So make sure you put something under it. That's what these are for. So it's actually suspended. So now we're going to be removing this magnetron and we're going to be testing it. And it's basically four Phillips screws. And just be mindful of that guy on top the thermostat so make sure that he is either removed or you should be able to just pull it out with it yeah if not just remove it you can pull these piece these taps off just like that and if you need more room needle nose pliers stubborn now there we go all right and that's ready to be taken out you might need a long phillips to reach because those screws are way back there 
And once you've gotten out the last one, you might want to kind of hold, hold it. It's already starting to fall, you can see it. And the brackets are on the other side, holding it in, so that's fine. All right, so let's test this thing. So on these, I like to see less than one ohms. If you see 1.2 or higher, in fact, anything over one ohms of resistance, I replace them. So you wanna be less, okay? So less than that. Yeah, he's bad. Now, another check you wanna do, you wanna check, see if it's grounding. So either of the leads, I like to check both, it doesn't matter, because if one is bad, they're both bad. So put it on the body of the magnetron and then back on this lead. See that? That has resistance, you're not supposed to. That's high resistance. Same thing. So the internal part is now touching this. So this is bad. So we're gonna replace it. So we got a magnetron here. Again, so if you have a magnetron on yours and you've done this test, okay? And you do this test. I like to stick it in one of the holes so you know you're getting a good contact. You should not have any reading there. Okay, so this is a good one. We're gonna put this in. And um, if you have a high reading, there's a good chance that, okay, 0.9. So it depends on how you put your meter, okay? Your contact point increases or decreases your resistance. So if you put this here, you're increasing the resistance, okay? And you're gonna get a higher reading. Now, if you just use the tip, or the tips, okay, 0.8, okay? All right, so on this Samsung model, you're gonna have your tabs, so no screws on the right, and you only secure on the left. So, and you do have to put the tabs in first, well, you want to make sure your your tabs are in. Trying to give you an angle here. Right there. At the same time, you want to make sure that your thermostat sensor is good. Make sure nothing's binding. Make sure you push it all the way down. And don't forget those guys. And then one more screw in here. And we're gonna do a test just to make sure we have everything. Normally I would check this as well. This is your uh, capacitor and your diode. So we might do a quick test on that. I'll show you, but if we're heating, we should be okay. So I'm gonna do a, do a quick test before we move on to that. You might need to use a needle nose, or if you have small hands, you can get down in there to reattach those. Everything's plugged in. So now we're going to put some water back in. But before, we want to make sure we have this supported. Put the turntable back, and we're going to do a quick test. Now, this is the capacitor. And just want to do show you how to do a quick test on this. Our main guy here is a diode. 
okay? And that's ground, that's the diode. So what the diode is, when the microwave bleeds off, there's a certain amount of voltage from the capacitor that goes to ground and it makes the capacitor safe. It bleeds it off, right? So you wanna make sure that power can leave. So it leaves, but it does not return because when the microwave is running, you do not want ground to go here, okay? So a quick way of checking that, now we're on ground, that pin, which goes into the diode, goes all the way up, but there's a certain amount of resistance that requires to open it, meaning power will come out at a certain point, but the amount of resistance going in, it's a one-way valve, so unless it's a bad diode. So right here is grounded and that's fine because this portion is touching metal. So now we're gonna pull this, use a pliers, even though I think it's already grounded. I mean, it's already um, discharged, but we don't take chances. So something insulated and remove this and I'll show you how to test it. Insulation pliers, insulated pliers. You don't have to remove that. Of course, make sure the unit is unplugged always. So now we're free and what we're going to do now, put our meter back to ground and we're going to insert it here. Now there's no power here, so you don't need to be afraid of anything. Okay. And we should not have anything. So that tells you that the signal going here and going up is intact. It's good. So. What you need to worry about now, if you wanted to verify that this is working, you could add voltage, whatever the resistance is, it would overcome it and it would open this. But as of right now, we are good. It is not grounded, it is not shorted. We'll put this back on, it is fixed. All right, so we're gonna just start this unit again, one minute. Start. See that? Hundred and ten, hundred and two. We have heat it's it's hot not super hot 135 all right so we fixed the issue now while it was rotating it sounded a little weird maybe some stuff's under the turntable so I don't know but it is heating so all right guys so we're gonna put it back together and you just follow the same way you took it apart put it back together and I think that's it thanks for watching and eat my coffee